Hello learners, welcome to lecture 6. The topic for today's lecture is creativity and negotiation and communication. Another very vital subject. In the earlier lectures, we have seen the importance of verbal and non-verbal communication, body language. All those will come into play when you also try to bring in creativity and uh, effective negotiation and communication. One reason why these two are made part of effective communication, they are also considered as soft skills, negotiation and creativity. Today you can't imagine what most students are going through. They have so much of creativity in them in terms of talent, but they are not able to utilize these creative talents because they are preoccupied with the domain subjects. Creativity just as it helps somebody express their art, their uh, creative talents like uh, singing or dancing. Creativity can also be evident in day-to-day -day activities, in cooking, in uh, driving to school or driving to workplace. There is not a single place in our field of activities which wherein you cannot bring creativity. Every activity of ours can become creative if we are aware of the utility, the charm behind being creative in one's life. Now, let me uh, bring this idea in the context of communication. One can bring in creativity in communication in so many ways. When we talk of creativity in communication, what do we mean? We mean the sum of these following. The capacity to read hidden messages. Let me take that. What people call reading between the lines, reading beyond the lines. Sometimes communication works in subtle way that the actual words don't reveal much. You need to read between lines. This is a super fine skill, this is a creative skill which comes through practice, which comes through a lot of exposure and you need to build up that creative dimension in your communication. But there are certain bases on which you need to read uh, between lines, read for hidden messages. The other point is to express concern and sympathy. In your day-to-day -day communication, if you are expressing concern with the other person's problems, suffering or difficulties, if you are sympathetic or what we said earlier in the previous lessons, empathetic, then that is also a manifestation of the creative side of your personality. You need to show concern, you need to show sympathy and empathy. The other way of creative expression is to see a link not seen before. Uh, let me give you an example here. Unexpected interpretation. There was once uh, hoarding, there was a public uh, government slogan which was kept on the traffic near the crossroads, the government said alcohol kills you slowly. In other words, what they were trying to say is don't drink liquor, don't alcohol kills you slowly they said. And next day some mischief makers who were actually creative in their linguistic expression, they gave a reply there, we are not in a hurry to die. So totally unexpected response was given there. So, uh, there are umpteen number of ways in which you can be creative in language and communication. The other way is to infer the unsaid, to infer to, un to sort of read something that is inferential, it is not openly said and possible consequences or even to tailor a response that can alter a communication situation to one's advantage. Like uh, one's uh, George Bernard, all of you must have heard about this, this great writer, British writer, George Bernard Shaw. He was by then very famous, big fan of his, a lady who goes there and tries to meet him in his work, in his office, in his, in his London office. So she says, sir, I've come here and I'm a big fan of yours. She happens to be a very beautiful lady and, and she tells you, and sh by the way, sh Bernard Shaw was known for his bad looks. And this lady, this fan of his was a very good looking lady. So she goes there after talking for some time, she says, what if we marry each other? I'm sure 
our kids will get my looks and your brains. Immediately, Shaw listened to it and said, what if the other way happened, if the kids got my looks and your brains? So in a way, he was trying to say that she was not being intelligent, although she looked. So this is the way you immediately reply to a situation. You see the unseen link there in communication. So to tailor a response that can alter a communication situation to one advantage. Now having said that, let me move on to negotiation. How is negotiation to be undertaken to make your communication effective? Often we judge situations, decide our role in the context and react in the way we consider appropriate. A very important skill that is used subtly in all communication situations is negotiation. To be able to negotiate during communications, one has to be first conscious of one's role and also see how others perceive it. I think it was John F. Kennedy, former president of the United States of America who said that never ever fear to negotiate. You should not fear to negotiate. But he also said at the same time, never negotiate out of fear. When you are already afraid, don't negotiate. But you should not shy away from negotiating. So right from our first day of our life till our last day on this planet, we are always negotiating with people about different things. This is followed by each participating, demarcating his areas of operation and negotiating space, deciding whether and how much to empower the other person. In an interaction, you should know how much of openness, how much of power one can give to the other person, part of negotiation. The next stage is one where the exchange is decided. The terms and conditions here is largely the outcome or the fallout of the first two factors. Now, what are the factors that play an important role while negotiating successfully? Let us look into this. First one is be conscious of the way you and your participants have positioned yourselves. The factors that each is looking for in the communication situation. The second one is it helps often if the participants are fair and are willing to commit themselves. A communication situation built on a sense of fairness and trust can result in strong, satisfying, lasting relationships. So in all matters of negotiation, a sense of fairness and trust is very important. Thirdly, we often conclude that our win depends on somebody's loss and we work towards a win-lose situation. This is not desirable. Why should we always negotiate uh, with a view to winning and defeating the other person? But effective communication situations, however, often built around win-win situations. In negotiation, in context of communication, when you're negotiating with the other party, you try to take care of their interests and your interests as well. That's the ideal way of negotiating. The situation allows both parties to benefit or empower themselves either materially or emotionally. Uh, I have also given a very good link here. It's called situational communication, characteristics of successful, effective, win-win negotiators and good life coaching. A lot of material is offered by these links. You may benefit from these. Thank you learners. <laughs>